Hi there, YouTube. So today we're at the last video of Epic History TV series Napoleonic War and it's the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. As we saw in the last video, Napoleon was unsuccessful in defending France, although he, he had a lot of victories in the defensive war, but he eventually lost and it, he was sent into exile on the island of Elba at the coastline of Italy. But he will try to come back to France and regain power and to start a new conquest of Europe, but it failed. Uh, I'm just going to say it miserably at the beginning. Uh, so yeah, the Battle of Waterloo may be the one of the m most known battles of the Na Napoleonic uh, era. But okay, let's jump into the video. I'm kind of sad that the series is ending. I would like there to be April another 50, 50 episodes. For 10 years, one man has dominated Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, Napoleon. Emperor of the French. Oh, they're using another Under map. Under his military genius, France conquered an empire that spanned the continent. But finally, he has been defeated by a grand coalition of his enemies. Napoleon is forced to abdicate and exiled to the tiny island of Elba. While the Bourbon monarchy is restored to France in the corpulent form of Louis XVIII. But rumors yep. soon reach Napoleon that France would welcome his return. The French people have little love for the monarchy or its hangers on, the very people whose excesses led to the French Revolution 25 years before. Yeah, and the ideas of the French Revolution, so Egalité, Fraternité, Liberté, uh, were not only popular in France, they were also spread throughout Europe as the Napoleonic conquests went through Europe, they were pretty widely accepted come at the common folk, so normal people, not ar aristocrats, of course, and the rich people, but no normal, regular folk generally accepted all of those ideas. And if you see the Vienna Congress and everything that's happening there, all the coalition forces and all the old dynasties and monarchs just try to reinstate the power dynamics and the maps and every situation prior to the French Revolution and the Napoleonic era. Especially at the Congress, of, the Vienna. Congress of Vienna. Yeah. His enemies are locked in bitter dispute over the future of Europe. Napoleon decides to act. After just 10 months in exile, he returns to France, where the troops sent to arrest him rally to his cause instead. Most of France I'm not soon surprised. follows suit. But in Vienna, the coalition <clears throat> immediately put their differences to one side. They declare Napoleon an outlaw and mobilize their forces for war. For total Napoleon war. knows he must act boldly before the coalition launches a coordinated invasion of France. He counts on winning a quick victory and then negotiating peace from a position of strength. Mm. He targets the coalition armies within easiest reach. Prince Blücher's Prussian army and the Duke of Wellington's Anglo-Allied army. <laughs> Wellington switched Belgium. sides last time he was somewhere here. Napoleon's force is a match for either coalition army on its own. But he'll be heavily outnumbered if they're able to join forces. So he must keep them apart and defeat each in turn. Yeah, and he was a ma master of that. Just splitting the enemy troops apart and then attacking them in separate columns. Uh, just a quick note on the Congress of Vienna. The territorial changes were this. Prussia gained Swedish Pomerania. Russia got uh, Poland, parts of Poland. The Austrian Empire got Venice and also parts of Northern Italy. Belgium was dissolved and incorporated into the Netherlands and they formed a giant state there. So also the French speaking people inside of the Belgian territories were, let's say, taken from uh, France and given to the Netherlands. Oh, nice effect. Bruxelles. Napoleon's army crosses the frontier near Charleroi, intending to drive a wedge between the two coalition armies. The next day, Napoleon sends his left wing under Marshal Ney 
to take the crossroads at Quatre Bras. There, Ney clashes with Wellington's army, still scrambling into position. The Allied troops fight off a series of French attacks and just manage to hold their ground. The same day, Napoleon attacks Blücher's Prussian army with his main force near the village of Ligny. The battle is a brutal slugging match, but the French emerge triumphant. The 72-year-old Blücher leads a cavalry charge in person and has his horse killed under him. He only just escapes capture. He was 72. The Prussian army retreats. Damn. But it is not broken. Napoleon sends his right wing under Marshal Grouchy to keep them on the run and turns his own attention to Wellington's army. The British general doesn't receive news of Blücher's defeat until the next morning, at which point he orders a retreat through heavy summer showers to a position eight miles south of Brussels, near the village of Waterloo. There, he receives a promise from Blücher that the Prussians will march to his aid the next morning. So Wellington decides to stand and fight. Wellington has chosen his battlefield with care. His troops are behind a gentle ridge which will give them some shelter from French cannon fire. His right flank is anchored on the farmhouse of Hougoumont, his center on the farm of La Haye Sainte and his left on the farm of Papillot. Okay. All three are fortified and garrisoned with elite troops. Wellington's men need every advantage they can get. The opposing armies are roughly equal in size, but his is a ragtag mix of British, Dutch, and German troops, many of whom have never seen mm. combat before. Yeah, maybe those are unexperienced, but I would say the British troops were pretty damn experienced. They were uh, supporting the guerrilla warfare in Spain and in Portugal. But on the other hand, this is a frontal normal battle. It's not guerrilla warfare. So maybe their experience that they got with them into this battle didn't kind of count. But it's they also the question... hold off Napoleon's army of veterans until Prussian reinforcements arrive or the battle, and probably the war, will be lost. So he had veterans Sunday, in his army, okay. Sunday, bright and fair. Napoleon has ordered Marshal Grouchy to pursue the Prussians and keep them busy, while he defeats Wellington's army at Waterloo and opens the road to Brussels. But it's Grouchy who gets pinned down, fighting the Prussian rearguard at Wavre. Wavre. The main Prussian force eludes him and is already marching to Wellington's aid. At Waterloo, Napoleon delays his attack, waiting for the ground to dry, which will make movement easier for his troops. But the lost hours will later prove costly. The battle begins around 11 a.m. when Napoleon orders a feint against Wellington's right flank at Hougoumont. He hopes Wellington will commit his reserves here, drawing them away from the center where the main blow will fall. But Hougoumont's British and German defenders cling on desperately throughout the day. At one point, the French force their way through the main gate, but it's shut behind them and the intruders are all killed. Ooh. Wellington later calls it the decisive moment of the battle. Around noon, 80 French cannon open fire against the main Allied line. Most of Wellington's men are out of sight on the reverse slope, but many cannonballs still find their mark, smashing bloody holes in the Allied ranks. At 1.30 p.m., Napoleon sends in his infantry. The French columns are met by disciplined musket fire and then charged by British heavy cavalry. The French attack disintegrates as Napoleon's men try to save themselves from the crushing hooves and flashing sabers. Okay, but what, Scores they were wet veterans. Down. The ones that were sent there. Eagle standards are captured. 
Oh, that's not a good sign. That's not a good but the sign. British cavalry, exhilarated by success, charge too far. They become scattered, their horses blown. At their most vulnerable, they're countercharged by French cavalry and suffer terrible losses. Among the dead, Major General Sir William Ponsonby, commander of the Union Brigade. Around 4 p.m., Marshal Ney thinks he sees the Allies begin to retreat and leads a mass cavalry charge to drive home the advantage. That's not good. But Ney is wrong. Come on, the Ney. The Allied infantry are ready, formed in hollow squares with bayonets fixed. The French cavalry is this one dead? Is this one just dead or just exhausted? With bayonets fixed. The French cavalry can't break into these impregnable formations. They can only circle impotently until they retreat or are shot from the saddle. Ney's failure to support this attack with either infantry or artillery is a serious blunder. Meanwhile, Blücher's Prussians have begun to arrive. They capture the village of Plancenoit, threatening Napoleon's flank and forcing him to send reserves to recapture it. Around 6 p.m., French infantry finally capture the farmhouse of La Haye Sainte in the center of the battlefield. It allows the French to bring forward artillery and blast the Allied squares from close range. Yeah, but they now can't they're miss the closely packed formations, and casualties quickly mount. But now the numbers are on the it Allied to side. Seem that if Wellington's army doesn't retreat, it will be killed where it stands. But the situation for Napoleon is also desperate. The Prussians are arriving in force, and he's running out of men to throw against Wellington's army. So he turns to his ultimate reserve, the elite Imperial Guard, oh. the most feared troops in Europe. At 7.30 p.m., 3,000 of these battle-hardened veterans march past their emperor and across the corpse-strewn battlefield towards the Allied center. Oh my god. Wellington's redcoats rise to meet them and pour devastating volleys of musket fire into their ranks. When the Allies fix bayonets and prepare to charge, the Imperial Guard wavers and then retreats. Really? Really? I, I hoped for more from the Imperial Guard. Orders a general advance. About the same time, the Prussians recapture Plans Noir. It was, you know, like building up like, oh my god, the Imperial Guards are coming. They were sent to the front. Now everything, now sh everything is going to explode. Now they're going to turn the battle around somehow. And then a few volleys and then they wavered and retreated. <laughs> really unexpected, but okay. ...of the Imperial Guards' defeat and rumors of encirclement by the Prussians sweep through the French ranks. Panic breaks out and the French army flees the battlefield. Only Napoleon's old guard maintain their discipline, mounting a heroic but doomed rearguard action. Napoleon himself is forced to abandon his carriage and barely escapes the pursuing Prussian cavalry. The battle is won. First battle and the first Duke defeat. The of Wellington and Prince Blücher meet and congratulate each other outside Napoleon's former headquarters, an inn called La Belle Alliance. Blücher thinks it's the perfect name for their shared victory, but Wellington prefers the more English-sounding Waterloo, where he has his own headquarters. <laughs> of course. The Battle of Waterloo was, in the words of the Duke of Wellington, a damned near-run thing. It was also one of the bloodiest battles of the age. Around 50,000 men were killed or wounded, 23,000 coalition casualties, 27,000 French. Due to an appalling shortage of medical care, many of the wounded were left lying on the battlefield 
for several days. Napoleon was utterly defeated. Unable to raise another army, he surrendered to the British. They transported him to a second exile on the tiny remote Atlantic island of St. Helena. This time there was no escape. He died there six years later. Yep. Isn't there, isn't the there, isn't there also a, t a theory that he was poisoned by the Allies because they also fear that he is going to return to France again? I read somewhere the theory. If you, some of you have something to collaborate on that, let me know in the comment sections. I just heard about it, but I never kind of tried to explore it. a period it. of relative peace in Europe. There were no wars between the great powers for 40 years. And the British would not fight on the continent for another hundred years. Yeah, until but... Until the summer of 1914. Yeah, but... But... Ah, oh, okay. Forty years after the battle, a pioneer in the Look new art them. of photography captured these remarkable images. Wow. They are veterans of Napoleon's armies. That's By cool. By then, all old men in their 70s and 80s. That's cool. Among them, Sergeant Tanya of the Imperial Guard. Moray of the 2nd Regiment of Hussars. Cool. And Verlin of the 2nd Guard Lancers. Oh my god, that's so cool. These faces are a tantalizing link to the dramatic events that shaped the course of history two centuries ago. I'm also interested in what, what happened to the generals that were fighting with Napoleon. Were they also sent away somewhere? Were they allowed to continue to serve the, the Bourbon family? There are a lot of questions. And regarding the peace in Europe, yeah, the Congress of Vienna, it ensured technically peace in Europe between the superpowers, the monarchs, the, the different monarchies and states in, in Europe. But it also, as I said, crushed all the liberal ideas that came with the French Revolution. And it would also culminate in the year, in the revolutionary year in 1848, where parts of those revolutionary ideas resurface again on the surface and uh, people try to push on it. And in Europe, the mid, uh, mid uh, 19th century is you know, like considered as the birth of the nations where the first, uh, one of the first tricolors for a lot of countries were introduced. A lot of uh, hymns, uh, anthems were written uh, in the mid 19th century. There's a lot of, the, yeah, it ensured, the, the, Cong the Congress of Vienna ensured peace, but uh, it also ensured that the people and the nas nationalistic fevers of different nations in Europe uh, rise up uh, from under the surface. Okay, hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, as I said, I hope that you're going to stay uh, on this channel and also watch other series and other videos and uh, bless me with your input and comments. Um, if you're new to the channel, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We have channel membership, patrons, discord, everything you need to know is uh, in the comment section below. Okay, until the next time, see ya.